three and a half years that I've produced Kung Fu for Health and Self-Defense, we've showcased over 50 fighting systems and their philosophies from all corners of the earth. But no matter if the art originated among street ruffians in 19th century France or tribal warriors in the jungles of Indonesia, I found that despite their diversity, certain common denominators do run through the core of all these methods. Beyond the reality of survival during man's turbulent past, as well as present, lie paths pointing toward higher achievements in human potential and capabilities. Many of the New Age topics popular here on Channel 3 were already rooted in the holistic traditions based in these arts for the past 3,000 years. Once kept secret from the general public, now many of the older generation masters have told me that exposure through television could be the modern key to future preservation of some of the rarest styles. They consider America to be fertile ground for the further advancement of these ancient schools, and Americans to be ideal students due to their inquisitive nature. So I decided to bring together a panel of four respected instructors representing a wide cross-section of the arts for you, the viewing audience, to appreciate and gain as much knowledge in one show as possible. Because we have so many guests, it will be a two-part show, one hour total. And we'd like to interview all four of them today. My first guest is Manuel Marquez, and he represents the Northern Shaolin School, the oldest style of uh, uh, martial arts practiced in China, originated in the Northern Shaolin Temple. Glad to have you, Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Dr. Roger West, a chiropractor from Orange County, and he represents the internal styles of Shimi, Tai Chi, and Bagua. Welcome, Dr. West. Next is Al Johnson, and he represents some of the Korean styles, which are gaining much popularity nowadays, specifically Tong Soo Do, Wu Da Kwan. Thank you. And last is a familiar face to many of you, Steve Brody. He's a good friend of mine and also fellow Century Cable producer on the martial arts. He'll be representing the more modernized version or the eclectic styles of Jeet Kune Do, Kali, and other related skills. And I'd like to go back to each one of you, starting with Manuel, going in your personal background that led up to, you know, what you represent today. Okay, I started studying from Sifu Cam Yuan, who did the choreographing for the Kung Fu series on TV with David Carradine, and learned from Steve Ball. I learned Northern Shaolin, Northern Praying Mantis, and the divisions of the Praying Mantis was the Tai Chi Praying Mantis, Seven Star Praying Mantis, and the Plum Flower Praying Mantis. And later on, I learned the Tin Dao Qi Gong methods of the Kung Fu in that. Dr. West? I studied with um, John Price, studied the Xing Yi Chen, and uh, later I met Master Cheng Chiao Huan, who studied with my great great grand teacher Chan Xuan Fun in Taiwan. And it was a great pleasure to study with Master Cheng, having uh, the same roots uh, and, and lineage from uh, Master, um, Master Xi, who's the teacher of John L. Price. Okay, now. It's a little ironic, uh, Joe. I, I started studying 16 years ago, and, and uh, my reason for studying wasn't what it is now. It was because I wanted to relieve the tension and relieve the stress. I was teaching high school, and I began studying uh, with uh, Mr. Bob Alegria out of San Pedro, California, and studied with him for four years. And for the remaining years of the 12 years, I've been studying with Master Vic Martinoff out of uh, Rolling Hills, California. Right. Steve? Uh, I started traditionally in Southern Taoist system, Dao Don Pai, under Sher Ke Lu. And while I was with him, I received supplemental exposure to a little bit of White Crane, Shui Li Fat, and Yao Gan Moon, and did some kickboxing training with William Henderson. And then uh, for the last 10 years, uh, for the last 10 years, I've trained under Dan and Asanto at Kali Academy, as well as uh, a number of private years training with uh, Paul Vunak, one of his top students. All right. <laughs> to the uh, average person out there in the audience, well, a lot of this, it doesn't make much sense. What is the difference between this art and that art? Maybe you've heard these names, but you don't know really, a lot of, they think it's all chop suey. I've heard that, put in that term. Well, today we're going to change that attitude, hopefully, starting with an explanation by each of you on the characteristics of your respective styles. Daniel. Okay, the characteristics of the Northern Shaolin are the high kicks, the fancy footwork, and the agility of all the footwork and handwork. They have the tornado kicks and uh, spins that they have, but everything's in a long extension, like a rope with a rock at the end, with a snap mode. But they have the diverse mode for inside and outside movements, too. Okay, Dr. West. Yes, the internal systems um, are comprised of Xing Yi Chen, Bagua, and Tai Chi Chuan. The um, internal systems can be best characterized as being softer, generally practiced with less um, muscular uh, stress and strain, and the uh, focus being on uh, developing health for the individual. Uh, as far as fighting tactics go, very little high kicking is done. Most kicks are 
below the waist, and a great deal of emphasis is put on hand techniques. Okay. Uh, Tang Sudo Muda Kwan, uh, Joe, is um, derived uh, from Korea and also from China. And uh, like the Koreans, there's a lot of kicking involved, um, like most Korean arts. There was a lot of kicking involved. Uh, the difference is in maybe what we do is that we really use the hip a great deal in uh, everything that we do in regard to our kicking and in regard to our punches. So we don't quite kick as much as some of the Korean, other Korean arts. We try and, and, and have a happy medium. We use uh, about 60% legs and about 40% hands. And then we have a lot of grappling techniques along with Hyung. So uh, there's a lot of philosophy in regard to making the art uh, all encompassing, so to speak, well-rounded. And uh, some of us kind of spill over in each other's different fields, and I know that definitely holds true for Steve, being a traditionalist as well as a modernist. And you may want to describe, Steve, what you're going to offer to the viewers today. Well, primarily uh, in the Jun Fan system, the Jeet Kune Do concepts, and the Filipino martial arts both, which have been uh, integrated uh, under Dan and Asano, uh, the main thing is it doesn't look like any particular one thing at any particular time. One moment it may look like uh, Thai boxing, kickboxing, another moment it may look like Western boxing, another moment it may look like modified Wing Chun with trapping hands, another moment it may go into a, uh, a locking, a grappling method, just feeling the need to be, again, well-rounded to have a number of options at all of the different ranges so that wherever you encounter, whatever you encounter, you have some kind of familiarity with that range or technique that you can offset it with. Okay, before we go into our live demos, uh, I just want to ask me, Dr. West, I think we have time to maybe explain a little bit about the holistic healing, uh, the ancient Chinese methods compared to the modern, or in conjunction with the modern methods of you know, health rejuvenation through the martial arts. You want to speak about that? Too? Yes, I'd love to. Um, one thing in the internal arts that makes it kind of unique is that in the more advanced training, the student is also taught Tui Na, which is a form of acupressure and soft tissue manipulation along with muscle um, toning. And um, there's also a great deal of emphasis put on breathing and meditative type of exercises. Uh, to calm the mind and the spirit and uh, help to rejuvenate the body. Right. Every one of us can relate to how much stress the uh, modern world puts on our bodies and appreciate those moments where you can do things just for yourself and the great benefit from calming the mind as well as the body, having them work as one. Next up is a demonstration by the first half of our panel, which will be Manuel Marquez in the Northern Shaolin and then Dr. West with the internal styles. Please pay attention because we want you to note that this is part one. You will be seeing the other two instructors on part two at a future date. My phone number will come up at the end of the show you, to get in touch with these people and also to find out when the showing of part two will be. We don't want to lose any of the viewers. We hope you enjoy this demonstration that's had a lot of hard work put into it. Shaolin, we have several forms. We have 10 forms that we do in the Shaolin and 12 combinations on top of the 15 mana sets that we have and the 18 classical weapons. Here we're going to give you a variety of different things from combinations of beginner stuff to the advanced stuff of our forms. I'm going to do a form called Shaolin 7, which is a long drawn form of called the, the young forest form, Mui Fa. Form call is called Shaolin Six.
Okay, in this system, with the high kicks and the punches that they have, they have a velocity and a snap to them. Okay, in our system, we have to have basic stances to be de develop all this step, stuff for the uh, leg work. We have the basic horse stance, which can move from side to side. And the toe stance, hanging horse, crane, and the cross stance. Okay, in these stances, that develops concentration point and the gain of the body to be able to be strong and concentration point. Without these stances, you could not even do this system because you need the, the concentration point for the legs and the head to, to be developed so that it consists as one. Okay, we're gonna have the first combination exercise. I'm gonna do uh, combination exercises four through, or six through uh, eight. In this system that we have, to develop these things, it takes perseverance and control for several years to be able to do the accuracy of, of the kicks and punches. This does take time, and in, like every system, you should give that time to develop that system into the mind and body, to make it as one for part of you and the system. Here we have the, several techniques now that we're going to do. Okay, in order on the street, most people always come up with a straight punch or forward. Okay, we have the body as in one. And there are several ways of doing it. Okay, just put it on first. Okay, first you can control the arm going sideways or down or up, okay, or in the four corners. Okay, and applying the shell end system, it would be a punch, would come. It would come and then the shell end would strike into the throat. Step in here, knee, spin around and kick. Okay, and that, within the time that we have, is this like the movements that they come, it could be a punch, a block punch. Okay, and the pierce, wipe it with the elbow and then the knee, but step in, I'm coming back, coming back. We have other punches and kicks for a double punch and kick, which start with a kick and two punches. Okay, in the system too, it's like all they have is the front kicks and side kicks that you have to block. A front kick would come up in a point on the street. He would kick and thrust. The shell one would scoop, come in and slap the body, and as lifting. As a, so you're gonna do the attacking on the ground or up in the air. But for the body wise, if you're gonna throw the body, instead of hitting with the hands and feet, throw a punch, it would come in using the body Throwing the body and then knee in and then wrap it around. So there's just different ways or using a leg attack. Okay, now the other thing is for a short distance attack from a kick to a punch. Okay. Coming across. Okay. Well, most people on the street have a habit of leading themselves to a, a punch. So as the punch comes, we retract and see the shoulder coming back for the punch. So you have a choice, either to move to the side, coming in, or moving, coming across and punching. As that way, it pops to the neck and then lifts up. But in the techniques that we have, we're gonna do the combination number nine.
Okay, in the system that we have though, we do, the northern is for the leg work. The leg work consists of being able to hit an opponent without them touching as a straight punch. Okay, and then another technique from the leg work will be coming from the side. Just to maneuver the hands in the position of the feet. Okay? Dr. West and I'm representing the internal styles here today on uh, the Kung Fu show. And um, the, there are three, actually three systems in the internal schools, Shini, Tai Chi, and Bagua. Today we'll mainly concentrate on Shini and Tai Chi. Shini means uh, form and body together with the mind. The idea is that the movements and motions you make should emanate from the person's mind and be performed faithfully by the body. And in, that also implies a unison in, in thought and move, movement. Um, to develop certain different powers in the body, we have the five element form. There are five basic motions, splitting, drilling, pounding, exploding, and horizontal motions. Um, we develop these in the five different uh, forms. The first one is P, which is mainly a vertical type of power. Uh, second one, Tuan, which is drilling or curving. Third one, Pung, which is very straight and direct. Fourth one is from the fire element, and that's a very explosive type of power, expanding. And the last one from the earth element is horizontal motion. I'd like uh, right now to have Mike and Tom demonstrate the five element form. And if you look closely within this form, you will see each of these five elements represented. Aside from practicing these five elements for self-defense, each of these five postures also have a correlation to the internal organs in the body. The first one, P trend, splitting, helps to benefit the lungs. And then water, Tuan, which is curling and swirling like water does, that helps to benefit the kidneys. And then Pong Chen, which is from the wood element, that also helps to benefit the liver and the gallbladder. Uh, Pao Chen is good for the heart. Pao Chen is expanding the chest, moving the whole body. And then Tuang, uh, Hung Chen, which is crossing, is lateral motion like earth. This helps to benefit the, uh, the spleen and the stomach. I'd like now to go on to some of the 12 animals, which are very rarely seen. Uh, the Shini has 12 animals, which come out of the five, the five basic forms. The first animal that we're going to uh, demonstrate is the tiger. strive not so much as to mimic the motions of the animals, but to try and catch the spirit, catch the idea behind each of the animals. In the tiger, the motions are very pouncing-like and, and oftentimes very aggressive and brutal, just like a tiger would be pouncing on the prey. Um, what I like to do is show just one technique as an example out of that form. What we're going to use is just the basic straight punch like most people have seen. 
tiger wipes out of the way again and throws his body force to the side. Both hands coming up, driving to the back of the head, then gripping and throwing down. Thank you. The next animal I'd like uh, Tom to demonstrate would be the swallow. In the swallow, you see a lot of white emotions and, and actually pretty broad motions with the arms imitating the, the wings of the swallow and the swooping motions that the bird has. Um, let me ask Mike to come out one more time to give you an idea how this might be applied in a martial setting. If he punches with the right hand, I'll wipe his arms away here and follow through to with a groin strike here. Bringing that arm through then here with a sweep and taking him down. It's hard to fall in slow motion as you see, so we'll do it a little bit faster. He punches. And then that. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next form is the cockerel, which sometimes is translated as the chicken or the fighting cock. I'd like Mike to demonstrate that form, please. I'd like Tom to come out just to demonstrate one of the techniques from that form. Um, in Shingi, oftentimes we will try to attack a person's center or attack their balance. In this case, what we are going to be attacking will be the, the attacker's hip. When he first punches, we will knock his arm out of the way, driving his center of gravity back and pinning him under the elbow. We'll keep it there, come through, and then attack to the tender part of the inside of the hip here, forcing the center back. Again. Thank you. Tom, will you please demonstrate the monkey form? <clears throat> The monkey is very nice and relaxed. And in so doing, it moves very quick, a lot of times jumping in and jumping back for attacks. I like Tom McCross just to demonstrate one basic technique with the monkey, and that's where he climbs the pole. He's up on the lookout, this position here. If Tom were to strike me with the right hand, I block here, and then hook, throw a kick in there, and then come back with the jab to the face. One more time, please. Thank you. Um, also in our school, we do do um, Tai Chi Chuan. What I like to do now is to have Mike and Tom demonstrate a two-man exercise, which is called pushing hands. The purpose of this exercise is to develop a sensitivity towards the opponent, towards the shifting weights forwards and backwards, and to develop kind of a listening through the fingers. Anytime that there is contact in a martial sense, 
um, the two people have to touch. Thank you very much. We may all say goodbye. I just want to thank you, Dr. West. Well, it's my pleasure. And remind the audience that this is part one of a two-part uh, episode. Please contact me with the phone number following the show if you want to get Dr. West's phone number, as well as to find out when the airplay of part two will be with our Tong Sudo instructor, as well, well as our uh, Jeet Kune Do Kali, Jun Fan instructor. Thank you, everybody. Join us again next time on Kung Fu for Health and Self-Defense. self-defense. This is part two of a full one-hour uh, special that we're running here. This is our third instructor who will be represented, and the Korean arts have not been shown too often here on the show. Many of you are familiar with Taekwondo, but the art that you're going to be seeing here is called uh, Tong Soo Do Mu Da Kwan, represented by Al Johnson of Redondo Beach. And, uh, Thank you for having me out here. So nice to be here. Thanks so much. And take, it, take over from there. Thank you. We'll do that. Uh, Tong Soo Do Mu Da Kwan is a uh, traditional modern scientific uh, Korean art that I have with me today. Uh, one of my students who's a second Don in Tang Soo Do, Mr. John Basso, will be demonstrating, will be demonstrating some of the basic aspects and then some of the more complicated aspects of Tang Soo Do. And I'll try and explain in the middle before we actually go to the actual movements. So if Mr. Basso would come out, please. Uh, Tang Soo Do has basic blocks like most any other system has. And we'd like to just do these basic blocks because everything stems from basics. We'll do the basic blocks just as a team, so to speak, just to give you an idea of about two or three of our basic blocks. Now, we'll take those same basic blocks and make an application that is conducive for fighting. So if we were in close and it was a hand-to-hand -hand combative situation and, and the situation called for this, and we could take the same basic blocks and defend ourselves. Now that's exactly what we just finished doing when we were facing the camera, and now we have a, an enemy or a partner with us, so now we practice that in unison. Okay, from there we have other blocks that we use against attacks very similar to some of the other systems that have been here in Kung Fu. Uh, so we're going to show you some of these blocks and how they work. I will attack my assistant first, and then he will do the techniques. Now, uh, we also use two hand blocks, and they basically go in this manner. When we're using two hand blocks, this way, this hand is usually blocking the offensive attack, and this hand is usually protecting and getting ready to strike. So what I will do is demonstrate, we'll change sides, sure. because we're going to do it from the left side. Everyone does not attack right-handed, although most people are right-handed. We'll do the same basic block, and I will show you some countering motions that we normally use. noted for kicking and in the kicking concept we try and use our hip 
almost on every single technique we use in Tang Soo Do. So I will demonstrate some basic kicks. Front kick, round kick, side kick, and back kick. And at some point, watch my hip as opposed to maybe watching the kick or watch the whole complete process. Up chuggy or front kick can be done with the front leg or with the back leg. Front leg has a tendency not to have as much power as the back leg. But the knee will come up in the air first, and the power will be delivered at the end. This one. Back leg, more power. This one. Round kick. And some systems refer to as round house kick. We usually call it our turn kick. Front leg again application. The knee will come up, and the hip will rotate over just a bit more. Contact made with the ball of the foot or the instep of the foot. With the back leg, more power because the hip turns more. Side kick. Very potent Korean kick. The heel of the foot makes the contact with the knee coming up and the hip really rotating over a great deal. From here we call this sliding up side kick because the back foot slides up to the front foot before you kick. This way. Spinning side kick. Back leg kicks. This way. The next kick is spinning back kick. Again, a very potent kick because of the complete rotation of the hip. So what I'll do is break the, the kick down so you can see the mechanics of the kick. First thing that we do is pivot. As we pivot, knee comes up in the air and you pick up the enemy and the target. Then your hips have to come into play. There's a snapping process from here. And down. Basically, that's the Tang Sudo method of kicking. Now, when we go into fighting with our legs, one of the drills that we use, and the Koreans are noted for a lot of crescent kicks. So we're going to do a crescent warm-up fighting drill <laughs> that we normally use to kind of to sort of harmonize ourselves with our enemy. We will work on this process. I'll start it off, and we'll just keep going until we go through two cycles. What we'll do is we'll do that over and over and over again, and pretty soon, hopefully, if you're fighting and using your legs, you have a tendency to harmonize with the individual and be, be able, hopefully, to counter when it's necessary for you to counter. Self-defense, the whole sensual aspect of our technique. A lot of grappling is done in an actual practical situation in the street. So we use the principle of joint pressures, elbow locks, wrist locks, and some of the other aspects in our techniques. I'll do it slowly first, then I'll do it in a rapid fire fashion to show you what's going on. And I, here. That is a lock or a hit down in and of itself. And here. That is a lock. Mr. Basso is slapping because he feels the initial pain of the technique. And here. Striking. And here. Striking. Here. Striking. And arm break. Here. As we speed the technique up, just for movement, because depending on which way or how the individual is going, we want to be able to coincide with the person. It's been mentioned before about harmonizing with the enemy so you can take advantage of them. The idea is the same in Tang Soo Do. So we'll speed the motions up. The next aspect that we have in the final aspect is a form, sometimes referred to as kata in Korean terminology. It's called a hyeong. And in the form, you're simulating fighting. We will do one of our advanced forms called chilsong. Chilsong has to do with lucky stars. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> yeah, that basically ends our demonstration uh, with the art of Tang Sudo. I'd like to thank Mr. Basso for helping me out. I'd like to thank uh, Joe George for inviting us. And if there are any questions, I'm sure we'll be able to, or we'll try and answer them. Thank you so much. Come Samina, which means thank you in Korean. Grody. Perhaps you've seen me on the other program that I do here uh, on my own on Channel 3. Uh, it's really interesting how there have been these different teachers here today. And in the Jung Fon system, that's within the Jeet Kune Do concept, which includes Filipino martial arts, uh, it's fascinating always to see how different systems have different approaches. I'm going to bring out uh, my friend Mark Balf here from training partner, and uh, just go through a little bit of this, and then we'll try and wrap it, uh, wrap it together a little bit. One of the things is, again, different systems tend to have different approaches. So, for example, uh, one, of, one of the favorite things in the Jun Fon system, uh, Bruce Lee, the, the founder of the Jun Fon system, that he'd like to do a lot is one thing that could do many things, for example. So, let's say Mark, Mark punches at me. Okay, I stop kick. Let's say maybe uh, Mark comes in with a side kick to my side. So I stop kick. Maybe I come back in. Uh, maybe uh, Mark uh, tries to grab my wrist if, if there's some kind of thing, stop kick and then come back in. So one thing that can do several things is one of the things that, uh, that we like to favor. Uh, different styles, again, do different kinds of things. For example, in the uh, Thai system, if uh, he comes in with a rear round kick uh, to the ribs, okay, uh, they would then cut down here to the leg. Or if he comes in with a straight kick to the gut, they may go to the side, attack the leg, keep the hands up. They may go into elbows. They may go into knees. They may go back into elbows, and then they come back out into the round kick. Uh, the Filipino styles, again, of the, the straight, uh, side kick comes in. Again, they like to destroy it with a, bring the knee up, or they may, when the thing comes in, they may just elbow it and hit the nerve. Or again, when the round kick comes in, they may like to destroy it, the nerve, and then come back at the stomping and then coming back in. One of the things, however, that the systems that there's a thread of commonality running through the systems, and that is there's a sense of rhythm, a sense of liveliness, a sense of timing, a sense of directness and simplicity. Uh, the same thing, of course, applies to the hands. Even just Western, in Western boxing, uh, which is a good, everything has a strength and a weakness. Western boxing is great because it gives you body mechanics, power, timing, distance. But then on the other hand, if all of a sudden you're down on the ground with a grappler, whoa, and there's no referee around, you're in trouble. If you're against a good kicker that can keep you away, then uh, you, you have to know that range. But again, different styles have different things. They all have their own kind of efficiency. So when the jab comes, the boxer might go here and return. Okay? Uh, again, in the Thai method, when the, when the punch comes, they just might go out here and just say, hey, I don't want to deal with that, and just come back in with the, with the elbows after destroying the foundation, the leg. Uh, and again, in the, the Filipino system, uh, when the punch comes in, we may just, mm, well, let me slow that down a little bit may just attack the bicep, the points, the nerves here, attacking the arm to get in here, rather than saying, oh, I don't want to go toe to toe with this person uh, right away. I want to get in there a little bit safely, uh, more safely, so I'll just cause some pain on the way in. If you, if, for those of you, I'm sure everybody out there has hit their funny bone somewhere along the line. We're basically going for the funny bone nerve attacks. That arm is out of commission for a while. Same thing with the nerve destructions on the legs. And uh, then you can go in, you can either walk away or do whatever else you need to do at that point. Uh, again, we draw a lot from modified uh, Wing Chun in the Jun Fan system. So uh, again, when the straight jab comes, okay, maybe trap it, but maybe he blocks it with that rear hand. Just come back here, then we come back in, trap it up. This is called trapping, trapping method. Uh, the first place that we like to usually start at is percussion, in other words, hitting, kicking, kneeing, elbowing, because these are the things that uh, are the most easy to train in terms of a direct, uh, direct application. Their things can be messy. Uh, it's not usually a clean fight in the street. 
And that's where the sensitivity training comes in. Previously, you saw some of, for example, the, uh, the, the, the sensitivity drill in Tai Chi. Many different systems uh, from uh, Filipino, Indonesia, China have sensitivity systems. What does that mean? Does that mean that you're learning to recite poetry and yawn, I see, you know, becoming a sensitive person? No. That means tactile sensitivity. In other words, that means that if I punch and Mark is blocking across the center line, that I know that I feel that. If he blocked with the other hand, I can feel that and go this way. If he blocks with that other hand, I feel that. If this hand raises up, I feel that energy. Okay. So these are some of the things. And again, the sensitivity, um, this, is, this is, looks like a kind of a game of, of patty cake. The Filipinos call this uh, lupite, all those 7,000 islands in a lot of different places call this differently. This is learning to find a trap over here. Okay. Okay, you may block over here. Maybe you raise it back up. Maybe we go into a Chinese sensitivity drill. This is from Wing Chun, Lao Tzu Wa Choi drill. Then again, there are locking drills. Uh, the Master Thomas in uh, just previous dust showed some great locking sequences. And again, you can lock, you can lock, uh, you can bring it around to here, you can take it up. This is good because you can't always bash somebody. Somebody who's at a party and they're uh, getting a little out of hand, you can't just start to beat the heck out of them. You take them lock, you say, I'm sorry, you gotta take it out. But the thing is, is that if a lock, a locks are very painful when they're on. But if the lock slips, which things often fail, maybe from this point he pulls away and he hits, okay? Back to the punching, bang. And now it can be back to the locking, it can be back to the locking, or again, if you have to, if you have to, back to, to the um, percussion. It's a nice euphemism. Okay, so one of the things though, if you don't have, uh, if you've seen both programs, for example, and you saw, uh, the, the Shaolin and Mantis instructor, and you, and you say to yourself, boy, that guy is terrific. God, that guy's terrific, but do I have the, the, do I have the discipline to, um, to do those, those forms? And maybe you, you, you have great admiration, like I do, for, for the uh, Tai Chi Shingi Bak Wa teacher. And you say, well, but I'm kind of impatient. I don't, do I have the patience to be that discipline? And if you saw the great agility of, our, of our, uh, the Korean stylist, and you said, well, boy, I don't know if I can get my leg up there. These guys are great. These guys are all great. But I'm going to give you something for you couch potatoes out there. Uh, for you lazy folks, there's still hope for you to save yourselves in a confrontation, even if you don't have the skill and the discipline of these other instructors. Again, the main thing would be, uh, whatever you train, it can work. Whatever you train, it's possible to, to fall down and lose. But if you just remember, if you don't have anything else, if you don't have any training in these other systems, then you can still, there's still hope if you remember that uh, if you're this kind of range, that when somebody's coming in, again, it's the low, low kick, if you can just think of low kick, the round kick, the thigh, if you think of, again, if they're punching range, you can punch, but I can still kick, okay? You can, if you think of going for the knees, if you think of, even if he's grabbing me, Again, if you're thinking of just stomping and kneeing, at this point there's generally some kind of letting go. If you think of just when he's punching, I'm thinking, oh my god, I don't have the power. Those Taekwondo guys, those punches, woof, I would not want to get hit one of those. So you say, okay, the punch comes, whoops, eye, poke the eye, whoops, poke the eye. Uh, you go for some things like that. Or if there's a stick, you don't say, well, you've got empty hands, I can't use a stick, you use a stick. <laughs> anyway. So the thing is, you uh, just, just the main thing is if you keep your wits about you. <laughs> because no matter what technique you know, that's the thing. All of these disciplines will teach you mental discipline. They'll teach you uh, control to relate your mind and your body. And so that's a common thread. What you do is you check out the different instructors. You say, whoa, I really like that. I really like the, the Korean styles. That appeals to me. I really like the Chinese styles. that appeals to me. I actually like the Northern Chinese. I like the Southern Chinese. You check it all out because everybody, uh, everybody has something to offer. And you say, what, what appeals to me? And uh, that's the bottom line. I'm sure if there's any questions, uh, you'll give us a buzz. Anyway, thanks a lot. Thanks, Paul.
just as a final wrap up, uh, we want to bring out the point of weaponry. Most of these systems do have some sort of weapons training, and that can definitely help your empty handed art, as well as explain the cultural uh, the development throughout the centuries, the medieval times. This is what they fought with these type of weapons. So we still keep weaponry alive. And another reason the art is passed down and lived and survived all these years is the older generation teaching the younger generation. This is my student, Fernando. He's been with me about three years, and we put together a little stick fighting set for you, and we'll go at it about medium speed because of the space involved. So what makes the martial arts more than just street fighting is the fact that we are thinkers, we are spiritual people as well as, as, well as physical people. So I'd like each one of you maybe to give a little bit of a personal philosophy on what you teach your students outside of the fighting arts. Well, in our, in our classes, students learn self-discipline and self-motivation because sometimes it's not so easy to practice on your own after class time. And also it is, um, like I no noted early on in the first show, um, training in acupressure massage and self-help techniques in a stressful society is, is definitely a benefit. And, uh, well, I teach my students to be able to care for each other besides in class. As you're teaching with uh, students, you want each student to get along with each other. And that takes some while because there's animosity between everybody when they first start because they don't know each other. So as they become a family and they grow out and learn how to deal with people, then they can go out and deal with other people. And that helps them in their everyday life. Very good. Uh, Joe, I think it's, it's important uh, uh, for my students to, youngsters as well as adults, to make sure that what they're doing inside the studio in regard to their training, their intensity, and their relaxation, their harmony, is a carryover to their everyday life. And sometimes uh, they don't understand that until maybe they've trained for a period of time. But it's important that they do understand that. It's a, it's a way of life as far as I'm concerned with the martial arts. And uh, every student should approach it that way. And I think if they do, they will become better people. Steve? Uh, yes, Joe. One of, the, one of the prime uh, things that, uh, for example, Bruce Lee used to say was that uh, life is like combat and you must treat it accordingly. That doesn't mean that you struggle with it necessarily or beat the heck out of it, but that you deal with things strategically and appropriately with the appropriate amount of, of effort and energy. And within the arts, if you unify, if you're bringing into sync your physicality, your intellect, and your emotions, it is from that base that, uh, let's say, spiritual strength gathers uh, because those are your initial realities. And so that's that's the thing, bring that all into congruence. Right. Almost any system, you can know very much about that system from watching the early training, the basic training. You can see a lot of what's to follow, even though sure the advanced areas are more flashy, a lot quicker, you can still see the foundation of the art in the very first few lessons. I'd like to ask each one of you briefly what type of uh, you know, things with a brand new student who just walked through your door, what might they expect to, to learn the first or second night? Uh, new students, and in fact all students, go through basics every night at our school. Uh, that includes stretching and warm-up exercises, basic stance training to build a good foundation in the legs, and then a certain body type of training to develop flexibility of the rib cage and elasticity of the other joints of the upper body as well. Well, before they learn any complex moves, they have to learn the basic moves of horse stance training, the hatha yoga, which is be able to stretch out the body, and mind control on top of that. Uh, Joe, students are initially going to learn uh, uh, protocol, 
uh, before they do anything else. They're going to learn uh, what they're supposed to do in regard to when they when they approach, uh, enter the studio, and, and buy on the mat, the respect that's involved with the whole art, the whole system itself. And once they learn that protocol, which really doesn't take very long because it's pretty apparent by watching everyone else, uh, at that point in time, they're going to be working on some of the same things as some of the other gentlemen have said, the stretching aspect, the beginning processes of learning basics, because basics is really, uh, basics are really the foundations of, of what we do as martial artists. And Steve? Uh, yes, Joe, it's, uh, the first thing is just instilling, hopefully, uh, the first lesson, sense of movement, liveliness, aliveness and movement, and a sense of range, a sense of kicking knee range, sense of elbowing range, knee range, and a sense of liveliness, and a sense of, uh, so kinesthetic move, movement, and a sense of offense, defense, and just call and response, more than, uh, more than particular technique. That's the main thing, a sense of feeling of interchange. Okay. I'd like to we're ready to conclude the show now. Uh, hopefully the 1990s will usher in a new era of recognition and interest in any program that offers personal growth and universal understanding. I believe that the key to success lies in moving away from ego gratification, competition, commercialism, and more toward unity and development of the whole. For a 21st century man must always remember the device that the ancient wise men laid down thousands of years ago, and that is the human destiny is based on the cultivation of our spiritual essence. I want to thank each and every one of the instructors for the fine, fine job that they did. Thanks for having us on, Jeff Craig. And be aware that obviously I have four different instructors here. Every one of my shows is a different instructor, a different system. I will not endorse any one instructor to you. We want to try to get what is best for you because there are no two bodies that are alike, no two personalities that are exactly the same. So hopefully, if you have any interest in knowing more information about any of these instructors here, contact me with the phone number following the show, and we'll try to give you whatever advice we can. By all means, join us again next time on Kung Fu for Health and Self-Defense.